If you've ever tried to revisit your childhood by emulating some retro games on PC, only to be disappointed by how they look, then you've been playing them the wrong way. For years I've tried everything, from original hardware on a modern TV, to of course emulating on a PC, but both provide results unlike that nostalgic image we have of them in our heads. But by utilising CRT shaders correctly, I turned the game from looking like this to this, and instantly realised why I'd remembered these older games looking a lot better. So join me as I show you how I did it, which shaders and settings look the best, and of course, how you can do it too. So why do we need CRT shaders in the first place? The simplest answer is that older games were optimised for the CRT monitors of the time. The scan lines that the monitors had blended the pixels in a way that made certain surfaces, character models, and objects look way more natural and realistic. Think of paintings and the texture that they have due to being painted on a canvas. Playing pixel art games without a CRT shader is especially the biggest nightmare of them all. In Sonic the Hedgehog, for example, you can see the massive difference in the waterfall as it goes from a mess of pixels to looking like an actual waterfall that you can see right through. Hopefully here you can see how important the shaders can be in seeing the game as the developers intended. Before we go into all the shaders available and which ones are the best for certain scenarios, it's best you know how to install them. My advice for getting into CRT shaders would be using a program called RetroArch. If you are unfamiliar with it, the simplest way to describe it is that it's essentially a hub for emulators, meaning this one program can use different emulators to play pretty much any game that you can throw at it. And one of the great things about this is that all of your shader presets and settings are all in one place. It's however sometimes less accurate and provides way less options to tinker with than the individual emulators do, especially for instances where we want to use CRT shaders. If you want a guide on setting it up then I'd be more than happy to make that so just leave a comment if you want that. RetroArch already comes with a ton of CRT shaders pre-installed. Any featured in this video that don't come pre-installed will be linked down in the description. You'll head over to a certain shader that you want to install, and if it's a GitHub page, then it'll usually be in releases. Then in the assets section, you'll see a zip folder with the shader's name. Download that and open it with your favorite archiving tool. Leave it open and go to where you installed RetroArch. And then drag the shaders folder you have in the zip folder into this folder and you're all done. Sometimes the files are a bit different. Like for Cyberlab's CRT Royale shader, you'll need to open the RetroArch folder to get to that shader folder. This one also has a filters folder, so that one will go into the RetroArch main directory as well. Now to get started with CRT shaders, it's first important to note that there is not a one-size-fits-all solution. Not only do different games and consoles look better or worse with certain shaders, but also you'll want to replicate the CRT monitor that you have in your head. There are also many shaders that aim to replicate certain consoles' video outputs through different cables. To make this video as helpful as I can, I'm going to go through different use cases for different shaders depending on the console and art style you may want to play. I won't be going through every single console ever made and what shaders are good for them as a lot of these do have crossover and also I'd be here all day. Let's first take a look at 3D games around the PS1 era. Here's what native PS1 looks like with stock settings running on the Swan Station core in RetroArch. You can see Divering all along the walls in this scene and Spider-Man is looking very sharp and jaggy. If you hit F1 on your keyboard, you'll open the RetroArch menu. Go all the way down to the bottom and click Shaders. In there, select Load Preset and then select the preset that you want to try. You'll also see two folders here. We're going to be selecting the Slang one because we're using the Vulkan renderer, but if you're using something like OpenGL, then you'll select the other folder. Inside the Slang folder, we'll go to the CRT folder, and then the first one that we're going to try is New Pixie CRT. With this on, you can see that the divering is now blended perfectly, and Spider-Man looks way less harsh on the eyes. This shader in specific has a very dark tone. You can change any shader settings that you want to by opening back up the menu and going all the way down to shader parameters. Here you can adjust pretty much everything about the shader, from curvature that some shaders use, to the brightness and contrast. This won't however change the overall aesthetics of the shader, so what you get from the shader at default should be to your liking before you start tinkering. Another great shader for 3D PS1 games is the ones by Retro Crisis. He's got a YouTube channel dedicated to making these shaders, so I was excited to see what he has to offer, and the results are pretty incredible. This is the most harsh out of the shaders I tried with a heavy screen door effect on my 1440p monitor. It's really really accurate but tries to replicate a quite expensive CRT for the time, so it wasn't quite the look that I had in mind when I was playing it on my crappy CRT when I was a kid. The next one is CRT Guest Advanced. This is the NTSC option for it, 
and this one is super nostalgic for me because it does a pretty good job at replicating a more budget CRT of the time. Anything with NTSC or VHS in the name tends to mean that it's going to be a pretty dirty version of the shader. It can sometimes be nostalgic but also is quite gimmicky. There's going to be quite a lot of grunge on the screen, like the wobble that you'd get on older CRT monitors, and it's a cool gimmick but I wouldn't recommend anyone playing on this. Instead, it's recommended just to choose the normal non-NTSC versions of these shaders. The last one I tried was the Cyberlab CRT Royale. This one was just way too dull by default, but does look very accurate to CRTs of the time. I think if I had a monitor that could get much brighter, then this would look a whole lot better. I tried to tinker with some of the parameters to get a slightly brighter image, but it just didn't really work out. For this type of game though, I feel it doesn't work, but may look better when we move on to 2D games. Looking at all of these side by side, I really like the look of CRT Guest Advanced and New Pixie, but Retro Crisis and Cyberlab give an extremely accurate image. Accurate doesn't always mean better though, and for anyone just wanting to play these games and throw on a shader, these ones are quite advanced for the average user. But let's see how they all shape up as we move on to 2D games. Pixel art is the best reason to use one of these shaders, and a game like Castlevania is a perfect test bench for showing off how well CRT complements the art style of the time. I recommend a shader like GDV Trinitron for this case. I don't have much nostalgia for many 2D games, but I can still appreciate how good this looks. It really makes the artwork pop, and I don't see why you wouldn't play this sort of game without it. Other shaders that I'd recommend would be the Guest Advance one again, and also Aperture. All are great options and will depend on what kind of CRT look you want to go for. These shaders for the PS1 can also be applied for other consoles, such as the N64. For the Retro Crisis and Cyberlab ones, you can see there are options that are specific to certain consoles in video outputs. So selecting the right console here will provide you with a better image. It's also worth noting that for Cyberlab ones, you can see that there are some of the options that say a Blarg filter is recommended. To turn these on, you'll go back to the main menu within RetroArch, select Settings, Video, then click Filters. Here you'll see loads of different Blarg filters to choose from. The ones suggested here have loads of different versions that replicate different cables. I'd recommend you choose the cable that you remember playing on as a kid, or just go through them to see which one you prefer. A great example of this filter working is Sonic the Hedgehog on the Sega Genesis. This game combined with a Cyberlab CRT Royale filter makes that waterfall that we mentioned earlier see-through, which is how it should look. This one specifically has RF or S-video blog filters to choose from. There is also a bad composite filter, but that one was crashing my retroarch, so unfortunately I couldn't check it out. For handhelds such as the PSP, there is a handhelds folder within shaders, but we won't go into these too deep as they don't really add much. The difference between native and with the PSP colour filter on is very minor. I moved on from these quickly and went into the era that I have most fond memories with, and that's the PlayStation 2. If you haven't guessed already from my previous videos on this channel, I'm a big fan of this era of gaming, but since I use individual emulators for both PS2 and GameCube, I had to find shaders from elsewhere. Luckily, a lot of the RetroArch shaders have been ported to Reshade, and installing a Reshade to an emulator is super simple. You download the setup file from the Reshade website, click browse and select your emulators.exe location. Then choose which renderer that your emulator uses. For most people, this is going to be Vulkan, but find out which one you use for your emulator and install that one. Then when you're asked what effects you'd like to install, get CRT Royale, RS RetroArch, and also QQuint. I'll explain all these later. After that, you can just spam next to finish the installation. When in game, you can simply press the home key, skip the tutorial, and then just click whatever shaders you want on. I chose to have a look at the CRT Royale one first. This one is like the Cyberlab one where it's super accurate, but I struggled to make it look good on my monitor. Probably because it doesn't have great HDR, and therefore doesn't get all that bright. These reshade ones have quite a few settings that are worth changing. To make it really easy to understand, these are the main important things to tinker with. In the Phosphor Mask tab, you can play around with the different options. Shadow was to my understanding the most used among CRTs for the time, but makes the image quite dark, and so if you're not running a high brightness display, it can be challenging to make this look good. Adjusting the scan lines would be the next step. This tends to be adjusted depending on your resolution of your monitor, so tinker around and see what looks best. There are a few options to choose in beam shape mode as well. The Gaussian option is the best, but again, does need the right display for it. It's also pretty important that every one of you set the gamma correctly in colour and effects. The two gamma options here should match, so I set my CRT gamma to 2.2 to match the LCD gamma. 
You also must set the game to use the right dynamic range for a CRT monitor. The simplest way to do this is to use Marty's Lightroom shader. That's why we installed Marty's Quint effects earlier. Turn it on and set the black point to something around 16 and the white point to something around 239. Lastly, you'll want to use HDR on your monitor if it's available and get your monitor to the highest peak brightness that it can. This is so that you can get somewhat near to how bright CRTs were. The struggle here is that for me, obviously, my monitor isn't capable of getting there, so these shaders kind of look mediocre. The image I get from this is just way too dark to be playable, so I set everything back to default and I adjusted the gamma so that they match, and this was pretty much the best I could get it to look on my monitor. There are obviously a few pixel art games that are on the PS2, and these were definitely the standout ones that I tested. Because this one just was a bit too advanced for my liking, I tried some of the others. Here all of those are side by side. This is actually the Dolphin emulator running Spider-Man 2 at 720p internal resolution. Let me know which one here you prefer. I think Guess Advance is one of my favourite. New Pixie is also great but does give the screen a strange green hue. Also out of all of these, Guest Advance is a shader that doesn't come included in the reshade install. There's a GitHub page for that one and all you'll need to do is drag the folders included in the zip file into your reshade shader folder. This folder can be found inside your emulator's main directory. There are three shaders included in this one, the normal one, a HD version and the NTSC version. The HD version looked nice but also a bit too clean for CRT. And then the NTSC version was on the other end of the spectrum being way too grungy for my liking. All of these have a resolution setting as well so you can tinker with that depending on your monitor's resolution. I found that somewhere around 480p worked pretty well. I've pretty much non-stop been looking at CRT shaders for a week straight so I think it's good we end the journey here for now. Hopefully you have a basic understanding of CRT shaders, how to get them and why you should use them. But I want to hear your thoughts, what games do you think look incredible with these shaders, and what are some of your top tips to help out those just getting started playing retro games on PC? If you want to go the other route and make your retro games look super modern, then check out the left video where I explore remastering old games with texture packs. Or the right video where we go over every version of GTA San Andreas to see which one of those is the best way to play that classic title. See you over there.